In this video, I just want to show you one approach I like to use to create kind of aggressive trailer downers within Serum. And so let's jump right in. This is the default preset in Serum. And if you have seen some of my other synthesis videos, you probably know that I like to start with a very rich full sound, filter it down, and then kind of rebuild it and shape it the way I want to with compression and distortion. So I'm probably going to do this here as well. So let's activate the sub oscillator and also the second oscillator here and pitch this one one octave up. If you want some width, we can also use one of these oscillators for that. That's fine. And now for the pitch movement that we are obviously going to need, I'm just going to use LFO 1 and map that to the global main tuning here. And for envelope 1, we want to give it a shape like this. So the pitch goes from high to low and set this to envelope mode. And typically I'm using at least a length of one bar. Let's just go for two bars here and then just play around with the range here. And we should have a very basic downer sound. And now, as I mentioned before, let's filter this down. Obviously, this is not really the sound we are going for. So I'm just going to route everything to filter one and just cut a lot of the highs here. That's fine for me. That's a decent starting point. So let's head over to the effects section. And now it's a matter of stacking compression and stacking different distortions and maybe some EQ movements in between. We are going to have a quite a long effects chain afterwards. It's just the way I like to approach this typically. So let's start with some multiband compression here. Also just boosting the volume and then our first distortion unit. Tube distortion is fine. We can also use this to add some movement to the sound. So for example, using the same LFO that we're using for the pitch. So in this case, the drive increases as the pitch goes lower. And then we can also already add an equalizer maybe and filter out some of these highs here. Actually quite a bit. I like to have an equalizer in between all this, these effects because afterwards, once we have a longer effect chain and more distortions and compressors afterwards, we can influence the sound quite a bit with this equalizer. And then maybe use some more aggressive distortion. I typically like to use the tube or the soft clip or one of the three ones down here. But if you want to have a more aggressive obvious distortion than some of these others work quite well so for example the sine fold i only use this at rather low uh, percentages it starts to sound quite horrible rather quickly so i don't like this sound really so it's around 10 percent in this case i think is fine also maybe add another EQ. This one I'm going to use for sure as well. Uh, with all distortion and compression, there is going to be some buildup in the lower mids specifically that I typically don't like. Then let's add another compressor. In this case, another multiband compressor. Then let's just continue with more distortion. Use some tape saturation here. Also use an other EQ here just to boost the highs. And another distortion is fine. Overdrive is interesting in Serum now because you can stack it so you can really destroy the sound. That's fine for now. So let's just use another compressor here. Sometimes I also like to use a reverb even, just not with the you know most extreme settings necessarily, but it can work. Also typically use this in front of the compressor, so just the compressor also affects the reverb. It can be really useful to put a filter just at the end of the chain, so you have a bit more control and can easily create different variations of the sound. So for example, a really low passed one. So this way you can easily get your, I would say, more standard, clean, low pass sine wave with a few harmonics downer. But you can also use this to add more movement like this. So it's nice to have it here in the chain at the end, just to have this kind of control. And another filter can also be interesting for this kind of sound. Let's actually put this in front of the reverb uh, to create some kind of tremolo movement. Uh, so we can use LFO2 on the cutoff here, and then you get this kind of movement. 
course, this is quite boring. So we want to set this to Hertz and then also automate the rates. <laughs> So we can get this kind of sound and actually we can also just use LFO 1 for this the same that we are using for the pitch so let's just map this here the lower the pitch the lower the rate of this so it kind of slows down as the pitch is going down as well which usually sounds quite good <laughs> And if you don't like this movement to be, I would say, this impactful, then you can also just automate the mix here. So for example, I could again use LFO1 on this and we don't need to have the mix at 100% at its peak. So we can also just start here, around here, I guess. You can still hear the movement. It's more of a fluttery movement. Uh, you can hear it at the, at the beginning of the sound and then it kind of fades out rather quickly. <laughs> You never lose too much of the sound this way. And then, I mean, there's plenty of ways you can obviously play around here as well with different waveforms. You can also just, you know, see how it sounds just with the sub, with the sine wave. Or just with these two oscillators, for example. Or you can also add the sub back in and just route it to the direct out so it's not being affected by, you know, all these effects here. Play around with different wavetables. Yeah, this could be good. Can add more movement here. And then change this. But also be aware that depending on the amount of effects and the settings you're using here, this input, it's not going to matter that much anymore at a certain point. It's just that the, all this compression and distortion, it's going to reduce the importance of the input here. Also, depending on the amount of compression and distortion you're using here, you will probably already have a nice attack. You can also control this a bit more. We can just use LFO3 for this and map this to the global main tuning as well. And then you can also use this in envelope mode and just draw in a shape similar to what you would be using if you wanted to synthesize a kick drum or a snare drum or pretty much any percussive sound i guess just to create this rather quick pitch bend here and then you can play around with the range here as well and this will add additional attack to your sound <laughs> And then it's interesting to play around with the rate here, or you can also set this to Hertz. Obviously, if you want to add more punch, then you are going to be using a quicker rate here. And if you actually want this to just be an additional pitch bend that can that's really audible, then you can use a slower movement here. <laughs> And then if you want to change the sound a bit more drastically within Serum, you can also use different filters. So for example, obviously a Kum filter works quite well for drastically changing the sound. <laughs> So that's one interesting thing to play around. You can also use uh, the frequency shifter here, especially if you want to go for more metallic sounds. <laughs> And also don't forget to play around with the pitches of these. You know, always changing the pitch in relation to each other uh, can also give interesting results. Usually I of course would do some kind of post-processing, so adding at least an equalizer and a limiter at the end. But you know, your processing doesn't have to stop within Serum. Obviously you can use all kinds of effects that you like afterwards here as well. I hope this gives you kind of a nice basis if you want to create those you know, heavily distorted uh, aggressive downers. Alright, so take care and see you in the next one.